There is a lot to like in this year's budget proposal. We also think that there's a lot missing, uh, especially if we're going to seriously tackle or attempt to tackle the state's business climate. In summary, we support the proposed investments in Buffalo and Niagara's economy, including the Buffalo Billion Squared. This is an opportunity to really uh, capitalize on the historic economic momentum that we've experienced under the original Buffalo Billion, and this allocation in the governor's budget would fund really critical initiatives and programs that we support. We are very supportive of bringing ride sharing to all of New York State. This is a tourism issue, this is a safety issue, and I think most importantly, it is an issue of economic fairness for upstate. We're not crazy about the 5.5% tax that's being uh, proposed to fund it. We'd like something less than that. Um, it would be great to have it, and it would also be great not to have the highest price service out there. Uh, we support the clean water infrastructure spending that the governor is proposing, uh, as well as support for the SUNY 2020 Challenge Grant. We also support efforts in the governor's proposed budget to lower costs for New York employers, including the sunset of the 18A utility tax. This is a big issue, as you know, for manufacturers and other high demand energy users. The expansion of the design build program. This benefits taxpayers by reducing the cost of public construction projects. And the expansion of the workforce training tax credit. So what are we opposed to? Well, chiefly, uh, additional taxes and fees, surprise, surprise. By many estimates, this proposed budget has over 800 million, 800 million dollars in extended taxes, fees, assessments, and surcharges. And that does not include the extension of HICRA, which I know uh, various people in this room have different opinions about. 800 million dollars in extended and new taxes and fees is not a way to say that New York State is open for business. We are also very concerned with the unintended consequences of the proposed by American purchasing provision. Let there be no misunderstanding. The partnership stands with local businesses always. That is what we do. But we also have to realize that we are living in a binational economy. This policy will hurt American companies that have binational supply chains, several in this region, and if passed, this policy will likely result in a corresponding policy from Canada that will inflict real pain on American companies doing business with the Canadian government. We need to think through this policy and make sure that in our desire to help, we're not actually hurting. So what's missing from this budget? Uh, we say common sense reforms aimed at improving the business climate. Chief among them, workers' compensation costs. As you heard uh, at our advocacy agenda rollout in January, New York State now has the third highest premium costs, up from 19th highest back in 2008. There is something definitely wrong, as this chart indicates. However, there is bipartisan interest in doing something real about the cost drivers of workers' comp. And we can do it in a way that does not jeopardize or compromise the care that injured workers deserve and should receive. <coughs> Uh, this week and in the following weeks, you will see specific bill language that is being uh, advanced to deal with the cost drivers of workers' comp. I will share that when we have it all with every member of our delegation. I encourage you to look at it and consider it. And um, perhaps uh, encourage the leadership of your respective bodies to include it in your one house budget proposal. If other states have figured this out, I know New York State can and we need your support and we need your leadership on this very important issue. Thank you so much. We're going to allow lunch to be served and give you some time uh, to enjoy conversation at your table and we'll be back with the balance of the program in just a little bit.